I have come with module 9.2 where I will explain the computation of capital gain and here at this module I will explain five problems. Just I will make it simple. You know that module 9.1 I have explained all the theoretical concepts of capital gain. Just the basic introduction. An index cost of acquisition and index cost of improvement we have worked out problems. So now you know that how you do index cost of acquisition and index cost of improvement. Now we know that that is needed for computing capital gain. So these concepts you have learned in module 1, the theoretical concepts and two simple problems. Now in this module what I am going to do is I am going to give five problems where you will learn how to compute short term capital gain and long term capital gain. So that concept will be clear. First I will give you the format how to compute the short term capital gain and the long term capital gain. Then five problems. So then I will go to small small modules because I told you section 54 is giving exemptions for computing capital gain. So small small modules I have divided and finally one module I will give where I am going to give more problems all the with all the adjustments because most of the problems when you get when you will get for a section C or section B it will have a combination of two adjustments. So you have to remember that when I am explaining the, the, the introduction modules I cannot give more adjustments. I am giving simple adjustments to make the concepts clear. Then we are going to learn that as the last module where I am going to explain thoroughly the concepts and the more difficult problems we are going to do. So happy learning and join this journey with me in learning income tax. I made it simple. I made it systematic. This I have acquired through different long years of teaching my students. So this is how I learned the subject. And I know that you will find it very simple now. That fear about learning income tax is not there in your mind now. Now you are learning this as a simple subject. So systematically I am teaching you and happy learning. I am going to explain with the help of PowerPoint presentation. As the first thing I told you, I am giving you the format for computing short term capital gain and long term capital gain. See short term capital gain and long term capital gain format if you will see you will see the difference. In the long term capital gain you can see that index cost of acquisition will be there and index cost of improvement will be there. Whereas in the case of short term capital gain there is no indexing. So this is the only difference between these formats. So please remember that computation of short term capital gain and long term capital gain these formats we are giving. So that will be easy and helpful for you to do the problems. So computation of short term capital gain, the format is, first one is sale consideration of the asset. That is nothing but the selling price. Now less expenses on transfer. Now what is expenses on transfer? Some problems it will be there, some problems it will not be there. So even if it's there or not, I have designed the format like that. So you will not skip that item. You will always include that item in the computation. So from sale consideration of the asset, when you are reducing expenses on transfer, you will get full value of consideration. Now you have to deduct cost of acquisition and cost of improvement, then you will get capital gain. One thing you have to remember in the question, it will not be mentioned whether it is short term capital gain or long term capital gain. That you have to decide based on the period of holding. Now I told you if it's a depreciable asset irrespective of the period of holding it will be always short term. So these concepts you have to remember. Next thing I want to tell you is that after capital gain you are reducing the exemptions allowed as per section 54, 54B, 54D, 54EC, 54F, 54G and 54GA. Then you will get the taxable short term capital gain. So similarly, we are going to do the long term capital gain. Next format is for computing the long term capital gain. You have to remember that same format only thing is index cost of acquisition and index cost of improvement. So this sale consideration of the asset that is the selling price of the asset minus expenses on transfer you will get full value of consideration. Now you are detecting index cost of acquisition and index cost of improvement. Because it's long term capital gain meaning always indexing will be there. 
then you will get the capital gain. Now from that you are deducting exemptions under section 54. 54B, 54D, 54EC, 54F, 54G and 54GA. These are the sections you have to learn as per the syllabus. Now taxable LTCG you will get. Now we will do the problems. So first problem is Mr. K received a house as gift in November 2007 from his father. You know that when he is getting a gift, gift that meaning Mr. K has not paid any amount. Cost to K for a getting that asset is zero. But his father who purchased it, he had incurred some expenses. So that you have to remember when it's a gift. So here, Mr. K received a house as gift in November 2007 from his father who purchased it in November 1997. So this is before 2001. So fair market value as on 2001 only we will consider. 1997 he is buying for 630,000. His father renovated the house in March 1998 at a cost of rupees 2,70,000. This is also before 1-4-2001 before we start our indexing. So the fair market value of the house as on 1-4-2001 was 10,000. So this will be the base for computation. His father had agreed to sell the house and had received rupees 1 lakh. The sale could not materialize and the money was forfeited. So this thing you have to remember, see sometimes when they will give advance, but later that purchase will not happen. So the seller is not under obligation to return the advance money received because the buyer is blocking the other transactions. So here this amount will go to income from other sources. Now the house was further renovated in 2010, 2010-11 and the CIA is 167. This you have to consider because it had happened after 2001. At a cost of 2 lakh. Mr. K sold the house in December 2019 for 35,60,000 and paid rupees 60,000 as brokerage. Compute his taxable capital gain if CIA for 2001 2 was 100, 2007 8 was 129, and for 2019 20 is 301. Now, table showing the computation of taxable capital gain of Mr. K for the assessment year 2021. Always remember that it should be in the table format and this heading should be there, column should be there. So this then only you can score maximum marks. So full value of consideration is 35,60,000. Less expenses on sale 60,000 you are reducing. Net sale consideration is 35 lakhs. Now less index cost 10 lakhs into 301. See 10 lakhs is the fair market value as on 2001. 301 is this year index divided by 129. So you will get 23,33,333. Now index cost of improvement. That 2007-8 he has done some improvement. That we have to consider 2 lakh into 301 divided by 167. 167 is the index for 2010-11. So you will get 3,60,479. Add up these two values. That is 23,33,333 and 3,60,479. So you will get 26,93,812. Now long term capital gain 35 lakhs minus 26,93,812. So your long term capital gain is 8,6188. Please remember that in the question it will not be mentioned whether it is short term or long term. See, this was purchased in 97. So, and now you are selling in 2019. So, definitely it is long term. So, you have to decide whether it is long term or short term when you are writing the final answer. Because tax liability is different if it's short term or if it's long term. So, you have to remember that we have to calculate accordingly. So, now I have included that also. Advance money forfeited will be taxed under the income from other sources. I already explained that. Advance money cancelled. Because not materializing the transaction. Now, notes for computation. I have already explained. Index cost of acquisition. Cost to the present owner is nil. Because he has inherited from his father. I told you Mr. K has not paid anything. His father had purchased the property in 97 and renovated in 98. The starting year for indexing is 2001. So, we have to consider the fair market value as on 1 for 2001. That is 10 lakhs. Now, Mr. K has become the owner in 2007. Now, 
So indexing is based on the year in which Mr. K became the owner. So 10 lakhs into 301 divided by 129, we are getting 23 lakhs 33,333. Now index cost of improvement, we have to take 2010-11 index, the year of improvement. I have already explained when we are doing the problem. Now second problem, find out the capital gain from the following details. Written down value as on 1419 is 18,000. Whenever the question says written down value, we have to remember that depreciation is provided for the asset. That meaning period of holding will not consider selling price minus written down value and it will be always short term. So that is the adjustment you have to remember from this question. So date of purchase 15-9-2008. Purchase price is 20,000. Date of sale is 1-9-2019. CII for 2019-20 is 301. Sale price is 26,000. Now we will do the problem. It's very simple. Sale price is 26,000. Less written down value of the asset 18,000. It is short term capital gain. See if you see as for the period of holding it should be long term. But since it is depreciable asset it is always short term capital gain. So the second problem also we have completed. Now we are moving to the third problem. Compute the capital gain from the following details. Purchase price of securities. But the adjustment I want to teach you from this module is that there is no indexing for securities. So purchase price of securities 2,60,000. Date of purchase of securities 1,11,2006. CII for 2006-07 is 122. Now sale price is 4 lakhs. CII for 2019-20 is 301. There is no indexing that meaning selling price minus purchase price. Now why there is no indexing for securities? See you know that securities are traded every moment. That inflation why we are indexing is we have to consider two things. Last module also I have explained we have to consider the impact of inflation. Then we want to give the maximum benefit to the taxpayer because if without indexing if long term capital asset is capital gain or short term capital gain is calculated. SSEs will not get maximum benefit. So when the purchase price is on a purchase price and the cost of improvement is related to the year of sale, then only the taxpayer will get the maximum benefit. Here in the case of securities, every now and then it's traded. And the price is readily available from the website, financial magazines, newspapers, everywhere. So you have to remember that since it's readily available, the impact of inflation is already included in the securities price. So this is how we are going to learn from this adjustment. That is, there is no indexing for securities. Sale price 4 lakhs minus cost price 2 lakhs 60,000. It's long term. See the last one depreciable asset. We are considering it as short term capital gain itself. Here only thing is that we are not indexing. But short term or long term is important here. So here period of holding is more. So we are considering it as 140,000 long term capital gain. No indexing for securities. Now problem 4, compute capital gain from the following details. Cost of acquisition of house at Delhi in 96-97 is 1 lakh. Cost of improvement made in 99-2000 is 50,000. So both these are before 2001. So we have to take the fair market value as on 2001. Cost of inflation index for 2001 is 100. Value is 4,60,000. Cost of additions made in 2008-9 where a CII is 137. And the value is 3,20,000. Sale price of the house is 1,11,219. CII is 301. Value is 28,60,000. So expenses on sale 60,000. So here you have to do cost of improvement. Cost of improvement we have to do. And we have to do the calculation. So sale price 28,60,000. Less expenses on sale 60,000. Net sale consideration is 28 lakhs. Now less index cost 4,60,000 into 301 divided by 100 because he is the owner. He is not inherited. That is why the 2001 index itself you have to take. This adjustment you have to remember when it is inherited indexing value that will be when the person SSC is becoming the owner. The person who is selling the property is becoming the owner. Here the SSC himself bought the property before 2001. So 100 is the base for indexing. 13,84,600. Now index cost of additions 3,20,000 into 301 divided by 137. 
you will get 7,3065. So, 13,84,600 plus 7,3065, you will get 20,87,665. So, from net sale consideration 28 lakhs minus this value, you will get long term capital gain 7,12,335. Here also, period of holding is more than 3 years. So, it is long term capital gain. Now, the last problem, uh, now I have explained that cost of acquisition of asset was in 96-97 and cost of improvement 99-2000. So, the index, indexation is based on fair market value as on 2001. Now, problem number 5, Mr. R inherited a house from his father. So, here you have to remember that the base year will be when R is becoming the owner. Father, Mr. D on 1-1-2006. So, CII is 170. The house was acquired by Mr. D in 8990 for rupees 60,000 and its fair market value as on 14-2001 was 5,20,000 and it was sold on 2019-20 CII 301 for rupees 18,50,000. Compute the taxable capital gain for the assessment year 2021. So, this is the last problem for the module. It's very simple calculation. So, in the format you are writing, table show in the computation of taxable capital gain of Mr. R for the assessment year 2021. So, sale price 18 lakhs 50,000. Less expenses on sale, it is not there. I told you, you should not forget this item. If you make a mistake in the initial stage itself, entire computation will go wrong. So, even if it is there or not, you learn the statement like this. So, net sale consideration you will get 18 lakh 50,000 itself. Now, index cost 5 lakh 20,000 into 301 divided by 117. 13 lakhs 37,778. So, this is long term capital gain because period of holding is more than 3 years. You have to remember whether it is short term or long term. Question will not specify that. So, it is long term capital gain 5 lakh 12,222. One more thing, identifying whether it is short term or long term is very very important because tax rates are different. So, this you have to remember. Now, I hope that the computation for long-term capital gain and short-term capital gain is clear to you and we have worked out five problems. Now, with this, we are going to do the adjustments for section 54. Then you will find it more, more easy and more helpful because we are learning the basic things and step by step we are adding the adjustments. This is the method to simplify the procedure for income tax computation. So, please remember that follow this and give me your valuable suggestions. Now, I have opened my own YouTube video channel that is Alice Marni YouTube video channel. So, you see that channel and give me a valuable feedback and you can learn the income tax subject from the beginning. So, I want sub to subscribe the channel and to learn that income tax and I will be uploading more subjects in that. So, this lockdown period will be really helpful for you to learn the subjects with the help of YouTube videos. So, thank you for listening. Give me a valuable feedback and suggestions and I will be happy to teach you with more modules. So, next module I am coming with section 54 and section 54B. Okay. Stay safe and stay healthy. That's more important. Thank you.